Hi, this is Mike Haber. Thanks for asking me, how does the amount of restitution get determined? The easiest way for this to happen is where the state and the defendant both agree to a specific dollar amount. But if they can't, and if they don't, then the court's going to have to conduct an evidentiary hearing and determine the amount of loss. Rule 3.800C of the Florida Rules of Criminal Procedure requires that this happen either at the time of sentencing or no later than 60 days afterwards. The amount of restitution is limited to the victim's actual loss. So if I steal 10 bucks from you and you suffer no other injury as a consequence of my criminal episode, restitution is limited to $10. But if I take that same 10 bucks during the course of the robbery and in the process I pistol whip you on the side of the head and I cause injuries that require medical treatment or rehabilitative therapy, well, I'm also going to be on the hook for those as necessary costs. If I take property, and property is not recovered, then you're entitled to restitution. But replacement pricing is not used. Rather, the focus is on the fair market value of the item, and that's got to be established. When this is done, we consider what the item originally cost, what the condition of the item was at the time that the loss occurred, and we also have to consider the likely percentage of depreciation that the item suffered. In other words, if a stolen item is used, the value of the item is that of a used item, not the amount that it would cost you if you were to walk into a store and buy a similar item. Unless we agree to the amount of loss, Florida Statute 775-0897 says that the state has the burden of proving the amount of loss that's been sustained by a victim as a result of the offense. And the burden of proof is a preponderance of the evidence, or 50.00001%, or more likely than not. Of course, the defense is always entitled to challenge the state's evidence and offer evidence of its own during a restitution hearing. Even after the amount has been determined by the court, the defendant will still have a right to establish proof of present and future ability to pay, as well as the effect of any scheduled payment on the defendant's dependents. That said, I thank you very much for your question. I appreciate your having asked it, and I invite you to ask me more. Please remember at Haber PA, it's all about reasonable doubt. And if you like this video, then please subscribe. We'll be putting out more soon.